Welcome back everybody to the Iron Speedrun to Max series. It has been quite a while since we last played due to leagues, so we have a lot of catching up to do. But first, let's recap. Last episode we made in this account, we mined a lot of gems and ended up stopping at 97 mining. The plan was to save some mining XP for stuff that we'd have to do later on, which we'll get into this episode. Right before leagues, we paid for some boost to throw chins in chambers to make defense not our lowest skill. That way, we could do 8 weeks of Tears of Guthix going into Slayer instead of defense. That plan unfortunately fell flat on its face. I had no idea that this was a mechanic, but apparently, to play Tears of Guthix, you must have gained at least 100,000 XP or a quest point in the last week. So logging in for 2 months only doing Tears of Guthix plan did not work out. That brings us to today. We found some supplies for making Sarah brews in her bank, and this is a very quick way of getting 100,000 XP. Then we're going to jump into Tears of Guthix. Currently doing Tears of Guthix and heavily regretting not doing it the last 6 weeks. Wow. 15,000 Slayer XP gained for 3 minutes of gameplay. That could have been a free 120k Slayer XP. Oh well, we gotta move on. Before fully returning to the account, I did a lot of herb runs where I would never go to the bank, just consistently run between patches. I went through all of my seeds, irrits, and above. And finally, while I didn't exactly play those two months, I did force myself to log in for 30 seconds every few days just to make sure my kingdom remained above 96% favor. It's time to go check out the gains. 18,000 teak logs? That's 2.2 Mokan XP easily banked. The herbs are honestly looking pretty juicy as well. This was basically zero time banked herb XP. I had my kingdom set to 10 workers on teak logs and 5 on herbs. We do of course want to upkeep this until the day we max, so we'll continue exactly as is. I have one main goal for today's episode, but that goal has a little side requirement. The big goal is to get 95 runecrafting for wrath runes, so that we can start slaying normally as an Iron Man. Wrath runes are used for offering spells, which will give us a very nice amount of prayer XP during Slayer. There's just one catch to runecrafting. As an Iron Man, we can't just train runecrafting. Runecrafting is one of the best skills to multi-skill with. So what's the first step to training runecrafting? Simple. Mine 75,000 sand. I'm currently hopping around Lumbridge buying bucket packs, because we do need to put the sand into something. And that something will be buckets. It has been a very long time since we've mined sand, probably like 500 hours of playtime. And since the last time, we've had a couple of upgrades. We're now 99 agility, so our run energy is slightly better than last time. We have a water tiara for infinite water skin usage, so no need to waste an inventory slot for a water skin or worry about having to get more. And of course, we're 97 mining, so we have a higher chance of mining higher tiered sandstone for more overall sand per hour. Whenever my run energy is low, we have to mine 3 sandstone and 1 granite. Ideally, we never want to walk to the grinder, and if we're mining these 4 rocks, we never have to move 2 tiles, so our energy slowly regenerates. Because 97 mining gives us higher tier sandstone more often, it's worth it to drop the size 1kg sandstones for less overall trips to the grinder. I actually already had 25,000 sands in the grinder before starting this, from way back when, so this is going to now be 50,000 buckets of sand banked. 25,000 buckets of sand took me a little under 5 hours, and I was able to maintain 90.2k an hour mining XP. Not bad at all. You know what they say, one 5 hour session a day keeps the viewers happy. This is now 75,000 buckets of sand banked. Oh man, I accidentally overbanked 25,000 buckets. I forgot about the ones I already banked in the past. Before continuing with today's video, here's a quick word from my partner, Gamersups. Gamersups has such an amazing variety of choices of flavors for you to get your daily dosage of zero sugar, zero carbs energy drink. I have been drinking these for nearly a year now, and Gamersups has been a refreshing treat for myself during gaming. Every scoop is 100 milligrams of caffeine. I personally like to treat myself to 1-2 to two scoops per day. These tubs come in 100 servings for only $40. That's 40 cents per serving. Not only that, but right now, by using code JCW at the checkout, you can receive 22% off any orders. Now is the best time for cost efficient energy to be even more cost efficient. 
Try out some sweet flavors by using my link down below. Huge thank you to Gamersups for the opportunity. And now back to the video. Before we turn those 75,000 buckets of sand into molten glass, let's talk about it. Molten glass can be blown into different items. At level 87, you will knock empty light orbs. If I were to blow glass now before 87, I would get 55 XP per molten glass. If I wait until 87 to use them, I will get 70 XP per glass. More XP per glass means less total supplies needed to gather for 99. So screw the glass until level 87. We gem mined for 10 mil mining XP last episode, it's time to cut those gems. Of course, not at a bank though. We're going to thief artifacts while cutting gems. We have to cut sapphires, emeralds, rubies, and diamonds, all of which our gem bag can hold 60 of each. That means we are holding 240 uncut gems with this one inventory slot. How great is this going to be for multi-skilling? I don't have many staminas, but for now, I'm very much enjoying just dropping my cut gems and infinitely running without having to bank. 76 crafting? 77 crafting? So it would seem that the gem bag goes in order from worst to best gems. Since there's no options for choosing which gem you want to withdraw, I need to use this wisely. I need 200 cut rubies for a mounted dig site pendant, and keeping all diamonds would be ideal for extra GP. As for all of the sapphires and emeralds, those can definitely be dropped. 83 thieving in the house. So I did that thing that Iron Man do where we accidentally run out of energy pots. I can't really do artifacts without them, so I decided to make more energy potions and while I'm at it, I'm going to clean all of my herbs. To use my Aventos for super energies, I need Mortmiter Fungus. And if I cast Bloom on my iron once, I can spam Bloom on my ult and be able to loot faster. Back in the game with more energy potions, here's 84 thieving. 80 crafting? 80 And yes, this is my life now. Half my inventory filled with energy potions that I have to spam click for 20 energy per dose. 87 thieving is landing right now. 88 thieving? Eighty-two crafting? Still not even done with my emeralds yet. And to end 91 thieving with a banger 4 hour session, cutting diamonds and sapphires? Here it is, 91 thieving. We're only 83 crafting. With 1.1k uncut diamonds and sapphires remaining, we might need an extra boost in order to get 87 before we get to our glass. However, first, now that we're officially 91 thieving, it's time for a quick detour for the Pharaoh's Scepter. We are entering one of the scariest grinds for this account. We don't know when we'll get our Pharaoh's Scepter. It's a completely RNG goal, and it could heavily affect how the rest of my account goes. Every 250,000 experience I get here is 75,000 less crafting XP that I would have gotten at Artifacts. If I loot the urns on floor 7 and 8, I could potentially take 10 to 20 hours just for the drop without even being dry. Imagine 20 hours, that's 1.4 mil crafting XP deleted from our account. The play here is to loot the chest on all floors and the sarcophagus on floor 4 and above. Because I'm going through the floors anyway, it's hard for me mentally to just leave on floor 7 or 8 without looting the urns. Normally going through plunder and looting the urns is 270k XP per hour. And because I'm going through the floors anyway for the scepter, it's very hard to justify leaving without looting the urns first. And since I'm already on the floor, it makes the effective thieving XP from looting the urns significantly higher. So on one hand, it's theoretically better to loot the urns. On the other, if I go dry and end up spending 30 or 40 hours here, I'm never going to be able to return to artifacts for more crafting XP. This is a tough choice. I have been trying to run my ult a couple floors ahead of me, so that it can scout the doors and I can immediately enter the right one. I imported myself some tile markers and I started writing down which door my ult entered, that way I didn't forget.
Oh, and of course, I always left 4-7 early when I had 2 minutes left remaining until I got kicked out. That way I was able to loot all of the urns in 4-8. It's been about an hour now, and we're at 210k an hour thieving XP. The zero crafting XP gain is honestly mentally breaking me. Doing 11 runs per hour, this is about a 6 hour grind for normal drop rate. That's 2.3 mil thieving XP where we gain zero crafting XP. Not to mention, remember earlier on in this series when we were doing Dagonoth Rex for a chance at the Berserker Ring and Dragon Axe? We had to kill 304 Rex, which is nearly 3 times the drop rate. Going 3 times the drop rate with 2.3 mil thieving XP would be 6.9 mil thieving XP, which is basically 99 already. This is so stressful. I have been having nightmares about just never getting the scepter to 99 thieving. After about an hour and a half of looting urns, I decided to start only looting the sarcophagus and chests. No matter how much time I have remaining, I left on 4-8. This brought my runs per hour to about 18 and 19, effectively making this a 3.5 hour grind. More importantly though, those 3.5 hours are only gaining 100k an hour thieving. So I'm only losing out on about 1.5 hours of artifacts every time I hit the drop rate. Getting 100k an hour thieving XP only does suck, but this should be the last ever RNG grind on this account until we're maxed. Let's hope we don't go too dry. Oh my god, finally! I actually got lucky for the first time ever on this account. I'm not even 92 thieving yet, this is amazing. We're gonna get so much crafting XP from artifacts. I still have about an hour left of gems to use, so we're gonna go through those real quick. Here's 92 thieving. Now that we're out of gems and we're not 87 crafting yet for the 70 XP per molten glass, we are going to make some unstrung diamond amulets. Instead of alking diamonds for 1.2k each, these will alk for 2.1k each. GP is quite valuable to us since we're dodging the normal money makers such as CG, so the 140k an hour crafting XP pre-87 plus the extra GP makes us worth it. 84 crafting? And I'm not gonna lie, this method is so AFK that I wasn't really paying attention, but I did hit level 85 a bit ago. We're almost done with our diamonds now, and we're still missing two more crafting levels before 87. How will we get this? Yep, I'm doing that spell that nobody likes doing. With three giant seaweed and 18 sand, the super glass mix spell will make molten glass. It's not just about the glass though. You'd think it wouldn't be much, but the super glass make part of casting this spell is actually insanely good crafting XP. We are just learning the pattern of this, and we're getting 185k an hour. There's still room for improvement. Casting this spell gives a random amount of molten glass. Sometimes you'll get 22, and sometimes you'll get 32. When you do get 32, the extras go to the 4. You might think, why not do 12 sand and 2 giant seaweeds then? That way they all go to your inventory, and you'll never drop any. I guess it's because of some weird spaghetti code, but because of the way the numbers round, 12 sand and 2 giant seaweed will actually get you less average glass per sand. Because of this, it's worth it to always do 3 and 18. Whether you want to pick up the molten glass or not is up to you, but it is more efficient not to. The blue circles at the bottom of the screen are game tick counters. The reason we have this on is because we can save 1 tick banking every single time if we click the bank plus glass mix spell in the same tick. When done right, the bank automatically opens in 4 ticks when the spell is done. Assuming you always take 2 ticks to bank and then do that right, this would be 180k an hour crafting. So how are we getting more than that? 
If you really want to push the limits of this method, it is possible to do everything in a 5 tick cycle. On tick 1 the bank opens, so react fast. Deposit your inventory and withdraw 1 giant seaweed 3 times and 18 sand once. This usually goes into tick 2, but before the second tick ends, make sure you exit the bank, click the bank, and cast super glass make. If you do this right, you're equal to AFK on tick 3 and 4. And then tick 5, everything repeats. The moment we've all been waiting for, 87 crafting. Only 8,000 more sands, so I might as well finish this up, and then we're gonna go have some fun. Finally almost out of sand, and we're maintaining 190k an hour. This is insane. According to the wiki, if you're really intensely focused, 600 casts per hour is achievable. That's 153k crafting XP. Wow. Now that I have all of this glass, I want to quickly wrap up 99 thieving so that we know where our crafting XP stands. We have 100k glass. Let's just hope we never blow this at a bank, because that would be embarrassing. The memoirs book always had 60 charges in it, but thanks to the update of removing the Zaya favors, the book now holds 250 teleports at a time. This is almost 4 hours of artifacts without having to worry about charging it. Those 70 crafting XP drops are really paying off. 75k an hour crafting alongside our 259k an hour thieving. Here is 93 thieving. 88 crafting. And then 94 thieving. Small change of plans. Because the southwest house is located in Varlamore, I'm always idling for a little bit on my way back to turn in the artifact. So I started bringing broad arrows in my inventory to fletch when I have no more molten glass left. I'm only getting 18k an hour fletching which might not sound like a lot, and it's not, but over time that will definitely add up. 89 crafting. 96 thieving. 97 thieving. Level 90 of that other skill we were training here. 98 thieving. And ending a little bit short of 91 crafting, here is another 99 for the account. Thieving. And finally, the grind we've all been waiting for. Rune crafting crafting. Because ZMI is such a long run, you can multi-skill when rune crafting here. To be completely honest, I don't think I've heard of anyone doing this pre-Colossal Pouch, but because we don't have 85 rune crafting yet, we're kind of figuring this out as we go. The method is a little different from people training post-85. Our pouches are holding 30 essence in 4 slots, and then I'm bringing another 7 essence after the glass in my inventory. That's only 37 essence per trip, which is kind of bad versus a normal method. But on the bright side, for now, our crafting XP per hour is significantly higher than our rune crafting XP per hour. The reason we wanted to finish 99 thieving while crafting first is because we have to make sure that no matter what, we complete 99 crafting from rune crafting. If we don't, we'd have to bank stand crafting. That's for the dirty AFKers, not the speedrun to maxers. Stamina's at ZMI are a myth. Anybody who says to use them is actually an AI created by somebody who is trying to merge staminas. If you have 96 magic, you can cast Spellbook Swap on Lunars, and then use a Soul Rune for Vile Vigor to turn your prayer points into run energy. Then the altar for restoring your prayer points back to full is conveniently right along the way when banking. Here is level 91 crafting. Since I'm not technically 96 magic yet, I do have to use a magic pot to boost myself up. This is very inconvenient, but I did try my best to alk as much as I can. Unfortunately, we only got to level 93. I couldn't do it guys, having only 37 essence per trip kept screwing me over. The rune pouch only holds air, astral, and cosmic runes. I still need to actually craft the soul and law runes. And at level 85, when you have that extra 12 essence per trip with the pouch, you get them nearly every time. Right now, I'm just not getting it. So to cheer myself up, I'm going to sell all of my blood runes for money. Something that I haven't had a lot of in a while. We have the green stack. 10 million gold pieces, we can almost buy a bond. 
Uh, forget the bond. Instead, we're going to spend everything we have on broad arrows. Our goal is going to be to try to fletch the entire time to 85 rune crafting. Fletching is the other skill that's great to do with rune crafting, and I should theoretically have a decent amount of time to do it. Because fletching uses less inventory spaces than crafting, if I can manage to spend that fletching time before level 85 for the extra essence per trip, that would be best. Two seconds ago, we had a green stack, and now we're poor again. I guess the good thing is that we have 180,000 broad arrowheads. That should be a lot of fletching XP. This is so much more bearable. 257k an hour fletching and 84k an hour rune crafting. Instead of only bringing 30 plus 7 essence per trip, we're now bringing 30 plus 20, which is a total of 50 essence. This is the same amount that people crafting with Colossal Pouch bring, so we're no longer getting screwed consistently by not making a soul or law rune. You might be wondering why I sidestep every time I'm banking here. When you sidestep, you land on the eastern side of the banker. If you were to just click the banker, you would land on the south side. The east side is one tile closer to the altar, and when you start your lap on the eastern side, you will get there one tick faster. It might not sound like much, but it will add up over time. Here goes 82 rune crafting, 86 fletching, 83 rune crafting. After 83 rune crafting, I took a quick break for the sake of convenience. I realized that I was close to 94 magic. Using a magic potion to boost from 93 to 96 is annoying, and if I were to take a 3 hour break to Dayalk for magic XP, I can get to level 94, which is an extra minute of being 96 per potion. And before we hit 94 magic, we actually got 98 mining first. And 94 magic. Before I got here I grabbed all the Dayalk shards from my bank, so before leaving I'm going to quickly turn them into essence. Before returning to RC, I decided to use all of my bones that I had in my bank from Slayer and Dragon Imps. This will get me an extra prayer level, which gives me one extra run energy every Vio Vigor. Okay, not gonna lie, I'm nervous as heck about this. I got my 4 alts geared up in one item just in case anybody shows up, and I got my gravestone carrying extra food in case I need to eat. But wow, I'm really nervous right now. If I die, I'll lose all of these bones. I had to get them myself. There's 78 prayer, and depending on RNG, I might actually be able to get level 79. Nope, nope, nope. Log out as quick as I can. And we managed to do it. We got rid of all of our bones. Unfortunately, we did not level up prayer again, but honestly, I think I'll be fine at level 78. Living the comfortable life of now 94 magic and 78 prayer, here's 84 rune crafting. I really flew through these fletching levels, here's level 90. And just before level 85 rune crafting, 91 fletching. Our life is about to get so much easier. 85 rune crafting and the colossal pouch unlocked. This will actually be my first time ever using this pouch. I never did much rune crafting after it was released, and if I did, it was on a main account, so I used runners, which obviously I wouldn't need pouches for. This is exciting. It is also time to replace our broad arrows with more molten glass. So we're going to start bringing 15 glass and the rest essence. I forgot to mention, but you do normally get attacked by NPCs in this cave. If you have two alts, it is possible to set up all of the aggressive NPCs in such a way where they won't attack anyone. There is an unofficial dedicated world that most people use. I am unable to leak it on here, however I can leave a link to the Iron Man Skilling Methods Discord which explains how to set this up and where. The link will be down below. Let's start gaining.
What a fantastic grind that was. With 95 or C out of the way, we can now make Wrath Runes and start the longest grind on the account. Slayer. I am now happy to announce that we are finally caught up to date with this account with the 95 RC clip. However, I did realize that I forgot to show a grind that we did about a month ago. I stopped range at 96 previously, chilling at the Monkey Madness Tunnels. For the remaining of 96 to 99 range, and especially thanks to the Chamber's scaling update at the end of November last year, I threw the remaining of my chins at Skeletal Mystics. Skeletal Mystics have a bonus XP modifier in them which grants me more XP per chin. 20% more XP per chin sounds great, right? Well, we're not only getting 20% more XP. There's a couple other things to this as well. The Chambers update back in November allows leaders to scale their party size, meaning me and my booster, which is one other person with 9 alts, can enter a raid and scale it as if there's 100 of us. Naturally, with 100 people, the Mystics will have even more hit points over 9,000 to be exact. Since their hit points are so high, I never have to worry about overkill damage. Think about it, in the caves, if I were to kill a monkey with 60 hit points and it only had 5 left, I can only max a hit of 5 on that monkey. I had to worry about that for every chin I threw at the tunnels, but here, it takes about 30 minutes to kill the mystic. So after 30 minutes, I have to worry about that for one chin. Here at mystics, we also have the 15% damage boost from our slayer helm because our slayer task is skeletons. You probably couldn't guess it, but the skeletal mystics do indeed fall into the skeleton category. Here's level 97 range. We're about to finally complete our first raid, and this one raid got us over 360k gained in both defense and ranged. Once the Mystic has fallen, we simply log out while the booster sets up the next raid and repeat. Forgot to record because we were leveling so fast, but 80 defense has been achieved. You might also be wondering why we're training on defensive and not rapid. Well, the truth is, we didn't originally plan to do this method. By the time we found out about it, we already had 99 range banked in chins on rapid at the monkey tunnels. I did not want to accidentally max with the leftover 2,000 chins in my bank, so I figured it would be best to throw these on defensive. As long as I hit 99 range at the end of the day, it should be more than worth it. Speaking of range, there's level 98. Eighty-five defense now? And these XP rates are crazy. Including the 1 minute walk to here not gaining any XP between each raid, we're still getting over 700k an hour in both defense and ranged. Oh, also, you might have noticed that I'm prayer flicking. I did that thing where I accidentally forget something, and yeah, we don't have any prayer potions. So we're going to flick Eagle Eye while alking. What could possibly go wrong? Oh my god! Dude, I just got destroyed! What? Okay, don't step off the safe tile. Noted. To finally wrap up this video, here is one more 99. 99 ranged. I have about 200 remaining chins, so I'm going to finish up this raid because, to be honest, 700k an hour defense is more defense XP than I can get anywhere else. So, for a recap where our account is currently at. It's been so long since last episode, so I'm not even going to bother showing the progress since then, but right now, we're at 2069 total. The Slayer grind is about to start. We are also currently sitting at 960 EHP. In the last couple months, there was updates to pre-99 EHP for Iron Man. According to Tempo OSRS, it should take 1,537 hours to max an Iron Man now. But I'm not sure how accurate that is, including diaries, questing, and essential RNG grinds slash upgrades. At 960 EHP, we are at 1060 hours played. However, with Slayer coming up, there is a lot of potential in closing that gap. Let me know what you guys think down below. Will we beat 1600 hours, get close to 1537? Comment down below on the final hours you think I'll max at. 
Don't forget that we are back full time to this account, so I will be streaming a lot of my Slayer grind on Twitch if you wish to check it out. TY for watching everybody, and I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.